Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Welcome back to the State RPG video series. So, what we're going to do today is just a little short video. I, I realize we, we want to do this before we go on to the next one. So, what we're going to do is we're going to create a little thing called a switch case. Now, we're going to use this switch case to um, kind of check if, if we want to quit or not and which state we want to jump into want to play the game uh, going to the menu whatever like doing buying stuff all this stuff so the idea is that we'll have a bunch of different states and each state is going to have a different job so it's going to be kind of segmented that way and we'll do that using classes and uh, eventually we'll make the menu in a class as well but that's after we talk about classes so i just want to tell you one more thing is that i've been going on in this series really tutorialish kind of but that's not really what I want to do for this series I, what, because it's going to be too kind of jumping forward and backwards between different uh, things. So what I want you to do is if you can and if you want to, uh, totally optional, although it might be really good for you to watch anyone's or mine tutorial series on C++. You don't, that doesn't have to be mine, right? It could be anyone's. I do like mine personally. <laughs> I would like you to watch mine because they go hand in hand with this. But if you want to watch someone else's, of course, go ahead. There's a bunch of tons of different good C++ tutorials out there. So just watch those. Kind of learn about classes and all these things and go through those because they teach you that better. And this series can be more about using that in order to create this, this little game. Right, so I'll explain some stuff in here as well. I might not do it as much as I've done in the previous videos in the series, but I'll try to, and I'll try to keep it as, as clear as I can. So I'll I'll just start off easy right now. We talked about the while loop, we talked about the boolean, we talked about variables a little bit and stuff like that. If you watch the ex my example series, my older example series, they go through everything you need to know. If you watch my new tutorial series. Uh, they go through any, everything up to the if if statements by now, or, and they'll go through a lot more later on in the future as I keep on making them. But I do have my example series, and they go through everything you need to know to to be able to create this game. But yeah, so we went through all this stuff, the char, yes, no, and stuff. But what we'll do is we'll remove this, and we'll just make one single variable int choice. Sorry about the sounds. Choice equals zero. And we'll just say if choice is greater than zero, then we'll do stuff. As soon as it's zero or less, we'll quit out of this program. Now, one more thing I'm going to tell you is that I'm not going to check for an error when I get something in. So if you write a character when you're supposed to write an integer, we're not going to check for an error right now. But we will in the future. So don't worry about it. We will. We'll talk about that. But for now, this video is just going to be a quick video on the menu itself. So kind of the functionality of the game. So what you want to do is every time uh, we want to have a function. Now a function is basically a some code all wrapped up into one body. All right. So a go watch the function tutorial. Uh, you'll understand. Though. So the but the function is basically a type. All right. Some kind of type. Then we're gonna have a just like I talk, I think I talked about this before, but we'll see. It's a type and a name of the function. This is going to be print menu. This is going to be just printing the menu out to the screen. Some kind of text for the menu. All right, so it's going to just print the menu for us. And then the body of the function. So void means that we don't want anything. We don't expect anything to come out of this function. Nothing is going to pop out of here. You can give it an integer. But then we, we're going to get an error if we leave it empty. We need at least one return of some kind of integer that's going to leave this function out. And this function is within itself its own scope. So you can't grab choice, just put it in here and, and do stuff with choice in here. I can't write choice equals 2 because it has a different scope. Now a scope means that what is accessible, that's a scope. So anything created deeper inside a scope. So this is one scope. This whole thing. This thing is one scope. So see, choice is created outside of the while scope. We can use choice within it. But if we create a choice in here, in the while scope, see that it's deeper in than the main scope. Imagine boxes, 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 smaller, smaller, smaller boxes within a big box. You, Everything 
that is smaller than the box itself is can access something from the bigger box but something bigger than a smaller box can't access something from the smaller box i hope you understand but we can't we can access stuff inwards but not outwards so this function is totally a different scope so it doesn't know about choice but what we can do is we can give it an in parameter which will be something like an int choice it can even have the same name but it's not the same thing this is a temporary variable this is an actual variable so when i call print menu somewhere and i give it choice in here which is this variable it's gonna go in here and this is just a holder you can call this sx or x or whatever you want it's still gonna get the value from choice the actual variable here in main when we call this function this is when you execute the code that is written here everything written here is going to be executed in here so this is the function call this is the function header this is the function body so this is kind of just making a blueprint of what it's going to do and this is actually executing it you can do it several times print menu here as well so it's going to do the same code that's in here several times as long as you give it this keyword the name of the function and how many parameters it ex expects so how many in parameters ex it expects so the x in here if i write c out x we're going to be printing out whatever the value in choice is so we're sending in choice in here this handle kind of this holder for the variable is going to grab it and it's going to use it in here but we can't change it in here so whatever choice is out here we can't change it in here we can only access it and, and see it there are ways to change it later i'll talk about those later but for now we'll We'll leave it at that so but our print menu function doesn't need an in parameter so we don't need to send anything in or out so it's gonna be void now all we want to do is we want to print something so I'm gonna say main menu like that and we're gonna make a new line and then uh, let's see. Let's keep the stream going. We don't want to make several C out. So choice zero. What is choice zero? It is. Um, let's say it is. Um, I don't know. Let's just say quit for now. Let's just say quit and then a new line. And then choice one would be something like um, character stats showing the stats of the character right that's really basic um, and you want to do this obviously just like that so we're showing the character stats printing them out then we want to do let's just copy paste this actually what am I doing uh, just like this let's make a few so two three and four character stats maybe a shop menu maybe a travel menu travel menu maybe some something else uh, oh, let's say inventory because we'll have items and stuff shop travel maybe we'll have something like a sleep menu as well something where you can sleep uh, rest on five so we'll just start off with this all right this is the main menu this is what's going to be printed out every time we call this print menu function so this makes it a lot easier than typing this every time so what we're going to do is we're going to do this uh, we're also going to make a uh, int let's see Mm. Int get choice like that. Now this is gonna get a choice for us. Um, it's gonna actually ask the user to input something, and it's going to get that for us. So let's just do it as a function. Let's say std. Did I include? Okay, I did include that. So I can just say cn. The same thing here. I don't need to use std. There we go. C in. Um, let's see. In choice equals zero. So we're going to remove this. 
completely. Um, oh wait, you know what? This is a good chance for me to show you how to do this. So, and let's just say void here. I'm, I'll explain all this. Don't freak out. Choice, and let's make it a reference. An int reference. So what just happened? You're like, what? What the hell just happened? Well, this isn't going to send anything out. We're not going to re return anything. We're going to change some variable that is already outside. So we're going to create this choice variable. Then we're going to use this get choice function to change the choice variable we're sending in. We'll just call this value, whatever. So you don't confuse these two. So this choice variable will be sent in here and a reference variable doesn't get a copy of the value of choice it gets the address actually the address in memory of the variable choice so it's when we're using value in here value plus or equals 20 we're actually changing the variable that has been sent in here so this is imagine a regular int like this as a copy so this won't be changing anything only a local copy of it so this is kind of like a holding it like looking at it right but this is actually touching it this is actually the actual variable that we're choice choice is being changed here uh, when we send it in or any other variable so this is kind of like really accessing it uh, so that means that we can change it. I don't know I was just blabbering on I hope you understood what I meant but anyway the reference variable will let you change any variable you send in so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see C out choice and then we'll say like this um, we'll print the menu first print menu so this is kind of kind of handy because we can call a function that's been declared up here created up here in another function underneath it because anything above the main function is called global scope all right this is the global scope and you can only create functions in the global scope and they are accessible to everything so if I create an integer up here global int global int equals 20 this is accessible in all of these functions everywhere 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 it doesn't matter about scope because this is the highest scope you can be in so when you're in here in the global scope you can access these functions anywhere within this file within this this set of functions and all that stuff so don't worry about it we can call print menu so what it's gonna do it's gonna print the menu for us first and then it's gonna ask us about choice and I think I'm gonna yeah I'll just leave it there so that's printing the menu and then the choice and C in will get the value will get something into the actual value here so any value we're sending and then yeah and then I made it a function because I can actually just um, uh, do the error check for the integer if it's an integer or not in here so we don't get some errors later on later on but for now this is fine so while choice is greater than zero so choice is gonna be some big value just one right now um, greater equal to zero greater than zero because zero is gonna be quit so as, as, as soon as choice becomes zero will this won't be valid anymore we'll quit so let's just do this let me say get choice get choice into choice like that see how I'm sending in this variable in here so every time I do it it's gonna ask me so let me try to run this I hope you understood what I was talking about let's see if this works so it printed my menu and it's asking me for a choice so choice one is still gonna work two three four five six whatever it, right now it doesn't do anything but as soon as I press zero it will be quit and we're out of here we're out of here so that's what's up that's how that works now we're gonna actually make the guts of this the guts and the gore of this program right so it's called a switch case switch case and it takes choice as a parameter I'll explain all of this you need brackets around it uh, curly brackets I think they're called case zero or oh, actually case zero is automatic we don't need a case for that now imagine this being a set of rules 
looks complicated but it's really not so this means that it's a switch this different switches depending on where the switch is a different thing will happen so if I have another case 2 here let me explain this so choice if choice is 0 there is no case 0 it will go to default doesn't really matter but choice will control this switch case so if choice is 1 in any given moment will come in here we'll do this we'll ignore this we'll ignore this if case is 2 we'll come in here ignore it see that case is 2 and do anything that's written in here and ignore this but if case is anything else but these anything else it's none of this above default is the worst case scenario this is not worst case it makes it sound really bad but it's something that will happen if nothing else is true so it will come in here and execute something. So let me just show you. Let me say C out. Uh, uh, what do we have? Choices one. I think we had character sheet and inventory. So we'll just say we'll just print out uh, character sheet, character stats. I think it's called stats. I'll give it a whoops. I'll give it a new line character right there and if case is 2 we'll print out um, shop was it? I'm so I'm so dumb inventory inventory and if default uh, no such option in menu so this is like when there is nothing else. Oh, what am I? I can't even write in English. No, sh no such option in menu. So this is when nothing else is true. So either one or two right now. Let's try this out. So if I say one, I get character stats right here. If I say two, I get inventory right here. If I say three, no such option in menu. Even though there is, but I haven't actually made any functionality for it. So don't worry. It's only checking for 1 and 2 right now. See character stats? If I say 0, we'll also get that. No such options in menu, but uh, it actually quits anyway. So we can actually make a case 0. And the break is for, for the switch case to not keep going. So don't forget the break. It will do anything. If case is 0, it will do something in here and then break out of it. It won't keep going. So don't don't forget the break um, so if choice is zero I'm just gonna print out quitting quitting game all right so if I run this hopefully if I press zero it'll say quitting game and then we'll, we're out so this is kind of a basic type of menu right now with some functionality functions I was gonna say functions I was like functionality functions <laughs> and beautiful stuff so in the next video we'll I said in the last video we'll talk about classes in the next one, but this time, actually in the next video, I think it's better to talk about classes uh, because we've got the menu going. So now you'll actually understand how the menu is working right now. And then we'll talk about classes and make this in a class version, kind of. Um, so yeah, but for now, I'll stop babbling. I hope you learned something. I hope it was fun. Go watch tutorials. Please learn uh, and have, have some idea of classes before you get into the next video. Trust me, you will thank yourself for that later. But just go ahead and do that. Take care. Keep learning. Be strong. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right? Bye-bye.